Today is Monday, October 7th, and the Dodgers' bats came to life, and the Braves rose from the dead. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Talking Baseball. My name is John Boy, and I've got my co-host Jake coming to you from Denver. We are actually recording this on Sunday night. It's currently 11.20 p.m. Eastern Time, and the Dodgers are up, but the game is not finalized. So give you some insight there i gotta make an airport run tomorrow so we're doing it tonight instead of a tomorrow morning this episode is sponsored by joel silva which his name was silver for a while but then they started getting super cute with it and just changed it to silva hey silva 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 and gold scotty reed scotty with an i s-c-o-t-t-i you think that's a female, Scotty? No E on the end? No E. Scotty. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Good. I'm happy for them. Okay. And it Robert seems, Brooks. Seems... Yeah. Bobby Brooks all day. Bobby Brooks. Brooks was here. Those are our most recent Patreon supporters. Go to patreon.com slash John Boy Media. You can be uh, the next Patreon sponsor. It's $2 a month. Helps us out a great deal as we grow and uh, get everything rolling. And thank you to everyone that's been listening and leaving reviews. Uh, the numbers have been great as these playoffs roll on. Jake, how are you doing? I'm good, James. I'm good. A big, big weekend of baseball. Another good day of baseball. Uh, the NL got, back, NL got back into it. Uh, Braves Cardinals, man. It doesn't get much better than that. And yeah, like like Jimmy said, and Maybe we'll twist the open tomorrow if if we do have a four run comeback in the ninth. If the Nationals can keep it at four right now, uh, Kolarek just won the Kolarek Soto round three battle again. I love uh, that. And my, oh yeah, I mean it's it's ridiculous. It kind of sucks. It sucks pretty bad for Soto. Oh, um, unless he gets them. Well, I I mean like literally next year that can't happen. <laughs> so that that sucks for Soto. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Hunter Strickland's in, which and we're not a big Hunter Strickland. I was just going to call him the human white flag. That was a little rude. But, um, yeah, good day of NL baseball that uh, uh, appending something crazy in the ninth inning, uh, the Cardinals and the Braves is the story anyway. So I think that's why we, that's why we're rolling um, and fatigue in an airport trip. But we're we here. The Braves Cardinal, the National League. Who actually, I was gonna say the National League series have been better, but if the Dodgers just hold on and win this, then I think Rays Astros was the better game than this one. So it's kind of split. But the the Braves Cardinal series has been the best of the four, right? Is easily, that, easily. Easily. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, I think uh, Rays have to win one. They have to win their game three tomorrow to. To, I think enter the conversation because I mean, hey, for half this game, Washington won <laughs> um, one inning. Washington effing blew it, brah. Yeah, we'll get into that. We'll let we'll talk Braves yeah. first because it's this is still going on. Do you have a burn? I don't have a burn. I could like ad lib one, but I don't have one. Ad lib one. That sounds fun. OK, unless you don't want to. No, I can. I mean, it'll be a little sloppy, but I, I don't know. Maybe maybe people like it. Maybe they'll just goddamn hate it. All right, cool. Those are the options. On your mark. Get set. Burn. Game three. We are in St. Louis where the Dirty Birds take the field. No, that's not right. The Cardinals host the Braves. We've got the old man Adam Wayne Wright as he tries to right the ship versus the Braves and Mikey that Soroka Ioka and what a pitcher's duel we have on our hands except Jim this is classic how this series has gone second inning we get the big old sack fly call the carpenter if you need some help Marcel the shell he scores Jim 
Soroka goes one hit through six. He ends up going seven innings pitch, two hits, only one earned run. But guess what? Adam Wainwright was better. 120 pitches out of the 38-year-old 7.2 shutout. We go to the ninth, and can Carlos Martinez close it? We saw it in the first game. We wondered if it mattered. Guess what, Jim? It did. The pride of Vandy. Handsome Dansby Swanson. RBI double. And then Adam David Duvall strokes another one. Mr. Clutch of this playoffs. 3-1 Braves. Melanson can do it. Braves win 3-1. Devastating for the Birds. Yeah, this is a great game. Soroka, the young gun, versus Wayno. Soroka pitches great. The one run was, like you said, it was a hustle double, a little flare Playoff shot. baseball. Little flare shot, hustle double for Ozuna. And then I think it was Yachty moved him over on a ground ball up the middle, and then Carpenter sack flied him in, and that was one nothing, and that took you all the way to the ninth inning. And there were some big at-bats along the way where Wainwright – was just throwing the curve. I mean, it is the pitch he throws 100% of the time. But that's not true. Russell Martin just took a 2-0 fastball from Strickland fucking deep. Well, now I'm glad I called him the human white flag because, yeah, that was a, that was a bomb. <laughs> holy cow. Holy cannoli. Holy cannoli, huh? <laughs> <laughs> holy mackerel. Yeah, that was a bomb. 2-0 bomb from Martin. So that Dodger series is over. Nothing for us to worry about. There's not going to be a seven-run comeback. Tonight's game. Tonight's game. Series may be over. So it's interesting now. I'm going to say it like it's a fact. Both both favorites and road teams immediately take a game on the road. The Braves were the favorite. And when you really think about it, like after after you split the first two games, you boil it down, the Nats... And the Cardinals were in three-game series where they had two home games. Like, they were in a better position almost. But they both lose the first game because the good rises to the top. And Carlos Martinez, what's his name? The closer. Did I get it right? Yeah. You're all over it, babe. I said, and we both said, make note that they got to him. Even though they didn't beat him in game one, make note that they got to him because that's going to give them confidence going into the next time. And, man, they they tore him up. Like, they were just sitting on his off speed. And, okay. Sorry. Couldn't get anything past him. Yeah. The big decision was, was with Billy Hamilton on third base as the tying run and two outs. One more out, you win the game. Do you face McCann or do you walk McCann to get to Dansby Swanson, who's been talked about a lot on this podcast down the stretch of the season? They opt to walk McCann and face Dansby. I think it's the right move because McCann's a lefty and his and Martinez's slider plays into his swing and his slider plays better to righties, I believe. Uh, you know the 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 outside slider, so I understand that move, but he opened him up with like a changeup or a flat slider right down the middle. Swanson crushed it. Like how can you throw that pitch after having the mound visit? You took the time to say let's walk McCann and pitch to Swanson. Yachty's up there. This is how we want to attack them. They make the game plan, and then that's the first pitch. Crazy bad. Yeah, and you're when you walk, when you intentionally walk McCann, what you are doing is you're putting your team in the best position to win. It's righty on righty. Um, Dansby struggled since he came off the L. He showed signs towards the end, and he's... He's been okay this series. He's been more than solid. I mean, he ends up three for four today. Um, and McCann, I think it's kind of funny what we came into this game. We were looking forward to kind of the grizzly veterans like Wainwright and McCann going at it and some of that stuff. Um, McCann ends up 0 for 3 on the day. I mean, you you second guess it in hindsight. If, if 
it's a classic case of like, wow, that that was if 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 Martinez had gotten Swanson out, we'd be saying, wow, fantastic move. He didn't, and it looks terrible. I still think it's the right move, just the wrong result. You can make the right move and be wrong, and it, and the result not be in your favor. Like if I had to do that again, I think I'd do it again. I think the yeah, pitch, I mean, it's, the pitch it's, is the problem. It's a terrible pitch. It's it's the same thing if they <laughs> if if they pitch to McCann and he he rips one, they say, oh, should they have walked McCann to get to Swanson? And yeah. if they if they pitched to McCann and got him out, they'd say, yeah, they trusted his guy. Um, so it's a uh, almost damned if you do, damned if you don't. Uh, good on Dansby. Um, he, we, uh, he, he has been a well-spoken topic on talking baseball for whatever reason. Uh, I think a slump in Vanderbilt got involved, but good for him. He's, uh, he, he's the hero. Well, Josh Donaldson's the hero. He's not the hero. Um, Josh Donaldson needs to be mentioned. Jo- Josh Donaldson in this whole situation set, makes everything possible by hitting the leadoff double. No, uh, that's not why he's the hero. Go on. He's just because how much he was screaming in the dugout. Right. That makes him, he's the top storyline. Right. The yelling hero, they'll say. I mean, he got the most face time. It's like Todd Frazier of the 2017 Yankees. Cameras were just okay. all over Donaldson the entire time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, Jim, you used to film weddings. You know, where the action is, you go to it, and that's Donaldson. Oh, it's great cinema. Yeah. Let's fucking go. And then Dansby with the pretty boy. Hell yeah. Such a hot boy. (laughs) Then Duvall, dude, comes up again. The pinch hit Homer against Flaherty game two or three. Two? Two. Game two. And then this... This he actually had to have a good at bat, and he he hit another another like slider or breaking ball went down and got it and just flipped it. That's the big that's the game winning hit right there. Like Dansby's cool, he tied the game, but Duvall gets the game winning hit, so he's having a hell of a series. Yeah, and I I tweeted it I, I tweeted it during the seventh inning I think. It hit the point where Wainwright was being so awesome and so fun and such, I mean, such just, <laughs> he's, he's already tied to St. Louis fans' hearts. This is kind of icing on the cake. Um, what an incredible performance, a <laughs> buck 20 pitches. Uh, and meanwhile, the 14-year-old Soroka on the other side goes out and just straight shoves. Good for him. Um I, I'm glad, like we said before, it'll be good for baseball if this guy goes out and has a good playoff start because he's probably the most underrated or most underknown guy in the game. I mean, he's the best pitcher on the second best team in the National League, and nobody knows who he is. So that was awesome. And uh, yeah, I said I tweeted it during the seventh inning. Whoever loses this game is going to be absolutely devastated. It crossed the threshold. Like you can't point to Hunter Strickland. You can't point to anyone at this point in the game. It's just daggers. And uh, I, I mean, they did it in St. Louis. Good, good for the Braves. There was a couple at bats that stood out to me. I tweeted about him. Freddie Freeman was sitting curveball and getting curveballs from Wainwright and couldn't hit him. Tweeted the gif like it, he took a fastball down the middle because he wasn't looking for a fastball. And he still couldn't hit him. They were talking. The announcers were talking about it. Like, yeah, well, Wainwright's doing a real good job of like keeping the break low. So even though he recognizes curve, he's going after it, and it's too out of the zone to even like do anything with. But and it, if you if you look at the swings, it's like, oh shit, he was sitting curve and still couldn't do anything. And and know what I think is funny, Jim, and maybe I'll retweet it tomorrow morning if I can find it. I should be able to, but. I uh, I tweeted out something. David Cohn, who calls the games, calls some of the games for the Yankees. You, you're if you're a baseball fan, you're familiar with Coney. Um, he's a really great broadcaster. He's into analytics, but he's also like he he gets being a an athlete and competitor and a dude, and he's just pretty silly to go along with it. But he talked about the evolution of the strike zone and how I mean, if you think about those you know '90s Braves teams and you picture Maddox and Glavin 
just throwing basically as far off the plate as they can go, testing the umpire to see how much of the edge they get. The strike zone isn't that way anymore because we have metrics. So the, the strikes, the plate is kind of the plate now. The strike zone has now gone higher. And I think someone with Wainwright's curveball, I think when you start started to see his career go downhill, it was because the strike zone was changing. And now with that high strike, he can start that curveball above your head and it comes in at the letters and that's a strike. And that's like a dangerous pitch that was not called a strike for the past five years or so. Mm-hmm. It's all vertical now, the strike zone. Yeah. The uh, go watch the Kerry Wood. There's a documentary, like a little E60 type ish documentary on Kerry Wood's 18 strikeout game. And they talk about that. And there's an umpire in it who says, like, well, before they started giving us the Q score, if a pitcher wanted to throw it in that spot and he was hitting that spot, we gave him the strike, even though yeah. it was off the plate. That was just how it was. And uh, that Kerry Wood game, like, he's got some that it's like, can't even imagine that being called a strike now. I mean, it, it, there, and I, you're, you are the guy, so I get scared when I say stuff like this, but l- luckily we're too busy for it. But you could put some side by side footage that would just be straight comical. I mean, Glavin and Maddox literally used to like, they'd get a strike uh, on the edge and then they'd go off another inch. And they just, <laughs> they would just push it. And some umpires would be like, yeah, hitting the mitt, strike three. And it'd be like, what, dude? Yeah. That's not even close. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, uh, Wainwright's performance today is just I, – I am so happy for both pitchers. <laughs> like, <laughs> Adam Wainwright is winding down his career. He gets to go out with right, – and he's not done. I mean, Adam Wainwright might pitch another three years. I have no idea. But 38-year-old Adam Wainwright gets to say he threw a buck 20 shutout innings in the playoffs – um, that's awesome, and Soroka gets on the board with that incredible start, so I'm, I'm happy for both of them. Just twirling it. Uh, Wainwright did put the team in trouble at one point. He loaded the bases uh, to Acuna and then Albies, I believe. And Albies had, had his number today. They had to bring in F- Andrew Miller. Bases loaded, one-run game versus Freddie Freeman. That was the biggest at bat. I I said, "Hey, go get go get your TVs on. Go watch us at bat." I thought it was going to be awesome. Is a two pitches pop out. It's very boring at bat. Big moment, very boring outcome. Unless you unless you are one fan base, 29 other fan bases, boring. Yeah, I mean, and uh, I think my my thought on that was, you know, Andrew Miller wasn't great this year. He kind of hasn't bounced back from injury, but if you're a Cardinals fan, that was the exact batter you brought him in for, and he did it. So and, yeah. Andrew Miller's starting to make make up for some of that money he didn't get during the season. Good for him. Do you think it's Brave series? I think uh, it's going to no. go five. This is just screaming five. Um, I think both NL series are screaming five to me, to be honest. Um, well, this one, I just want it to go five because the games have been so fun. And, and yeah, I think, so here's, here's my thing. Normally, if you're looking at a series like this that is, you know, incredible games back and forth, you know, St. Louis is at home again tomorrow, and they're just a good baseball town, back against the wall, season on the line. Normally, you look at that and you're like, you know, they're, they're going to have everything. It's going game five. If you're the Braves, if you let it get to game five, you're letting Flaherty on the mound again. And yes, he made two mistakes, but he got his playoff start out of the way. And I don't think you want to see that guy in game five. So I think game four is going to be full tilt. You're not going to see the Braves kind of going like, yeah, if we win, that's nice, but if we lose, all right, we're going home for game five. You're going home, but so is Jack Flaherty. So um, I don't know, man. I'm I'm tuned in. I That series, I don't think you can predict anymore. I think it's flip a coin. Uh, I think if these teams played it, it, this sounds so corny, but I genuinely believe it. If they played 100 games, uh, 51-49 Braves. Okay, I'll I'll say that. Holy smokes. Yeah. You're always going out on limbs. Such I'm a limb guy. 
I was once Four climbing a tree, stepped on a limb. It was a br- dead, dead branch. I fell. Filled with limbs. What do you think about this series? I, I haven't looked into the next couple games. Um, so who are the starters tomorrow? Did you just say them? We have... Let me get it. It's four games tomorrow. It's a lot of games, right? So it's going to be Michael. The th- yo, they have the three o'clock. This, <laughs> this series has gotten no ratings. Like, they have the worst time slot. They've never been the premier game. And it's been the best games. That's uh, yeah. is is ain't that baseball, huh? Um, Dakota Hudson versus to be determined. It's got to be Keuchel, right? You would think, yeah. Um. So yeah, who? Unless who knows that, what the, that short that short rest. I mean, he's a hired gun, right? It's a one year contract, and it's a veteran. It's not like it's a young guy that you're risking something, you know? Yeah, go fuck up your career, Keiko. Yikes. Do it in the um, name of Atlanta. Well, and you know who was supposed to be Max Freed, but they threw him in relief again, which was, <laughs> all right, Atlanta. He's a reliever now. We didn't know that. We thought it was a one-time no. thing. Then we were like, oh, wow, it's a two-time thing. And it's like, oh, he's a reliever now. Which I no kind of like is it, Atlanta. No one's got good bullpens. Imagine how bad the bullpens are of the teams that didn't make the postseason. I mean, that's... That's kind of the crazy thing. I mean, the, and if you think one of the teams that got eliminated, Oakland, they had a bullpen they liked. Um, and then who who was the other what? Who was the NL wild card team? Who'd the Nats get? I'm blanking. Huh? The Nats oh. have. Not listening to me. No, the Nats have Doolittle. Who do they get? That's your question. I can't think of it. Jeez, that's that's how locked in we've been to the baseball season. Um, the Nationals played the Brewers, and the Brewers had a – they kind of had a good bullpen. They have weird bullpens, a bunch of starters. Yeah. Um, the Brewers game feels like forever ago. Feels absolutely forever ago, and, yeah, I, I said it the other day. The Yankees uh, – Yankees and the Rays are the only two teams that want to go to their bullpen right now. It's true. All right, you want to talk about you want to do a makeshift burn of the Dodgers game, which isn't even over yet. Uh, let's just talk about it. Okay, here we go. Talking about the Dodgers. Da-da-da! Dodgers. Fine, we're just talking about Jake. They finally erupted. Bellinger finally got his hits. This is kind of what I wanted to see in one of the first two games. It's not bad that it didn't happen yet, but this is what I I was saying yesterday or earlier today on the last episode. Like, the Dodgers kind of haven't dodgered yet. Like, they kind of haven't, like, flexed, and they did today. And I think the Nats are dumb. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but why bring Corbin in? Because, Jim, they they didn't listen to us. They had the exact same idea we did, um, except we had it with Scherzer, but they went the safe route, which was use Corbin here, and then they have a fully rested Scherzer for game four at home. And then they have a fully rested Strasburg for game five, potentially in L.A. Yeah, but I would have done that with Corbin as the starter because Scherzer has already proven he can come out of the pen. Now, unless his arm wasn't feeling good because he doesn't usually bounce back that quick. And that's a lot to ask. If it was straight up, we'd rather Scherzer and Strasburg game four and five. Or they punted game three with not punted. But they went Corbin out. Of, I would have went Scherzer out of the pen. He's done it. He proves he's done it. Corbin never done it. And he got lit up. Like, they didn't just nationally small ball him. Like, they lit him up. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it turns into a hindsight thing. If if And Patrick Corbin had two outs and two strikes, and then he just completely blew up. Um, His curveball. Yeah. He just started hanging him. Yeah, like crazy. Um, but I mean, he he got he got as far as he could without doing it. Um, yeah, and I I don't know. I mean, maybe the Nats came into this game saying, "Hey, we got one in L.A. You know, we're we're playing with a little bit of house money. We we can end this series with Scherzer and Strasburg. Um, you know, Scherzer hasn't necessarily been Scherzer except in his relief appearance inning." Um, 
it's tough. You had a lead in this game. Anibal Sanchez, what a performance. Um, talk about uh, all the love I'm giving to Adam Wainwright for those yackers. How about Anibal throwing 71 mile per hour <laughs> change up curveball Ephesus up there and making the Dodgers look silly? It was so cool. The announcers were like, there's another one. He did it again. It it was awesome, and it is official. Dodgers win 10-4, so we timed it well. Um, Anibal was awesome. Ryu, um, he was okay. He's not the guy that screams NLERA champion in the playoffs. Uh, Ryu settled down. I mean, he gave up the two runs early. It was like the hit, and then Soto got him. And then he had... And then he had four scoreless after that. And I believe he only, I believe he came out because his turn in the order came up again. I mean, he only had, he he only had 74 pitches. They were just kind of done with him. He, I mean, five innings pitch, four hits, two runs, well, two walks, well, three Ks. Well, his spot in the order came up with two on. Right. In a two to one game. So, I mean, he didn't get taken out because he was starting to look bad on the mound. It was just, we need a hitter up here. It's the National League. It's NL baseball, baby. And and it worked out because I think that's the inning they scored all their runs. Yes, they scored seven runs that inning. So, it was a pretty good decision to take him out of the game there. So, I think Ryu's good. I think if you're a Dodgers fan, you're happy with Ryu. The home run sucked, but he settled down after that. And if the Dodgers were up 5 nothing, 4 nothing, I think Ryu stays in the game and probably gives you another two good innings. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't have that same belief in Ryu. Um, I, I don't think he looked that good. And, um, yeah, I mean, again, we're, we're one, one Corbin slider away from ha- saying a very different narrative, but that didn't happen. Um, and Dodgers have the huge inning. Corbin, I don't think you can – if you bring him in this series, I think he's like a loogie. <laughs> I think he'd be a game five, like Bellinger, Muncy, loogie. Because um, otherwise you can't really use him. Um, but I, I don't know. If you're a Nationals fan, you're you're still sitting up straight. You've got a game at home with Scherzer on the mound. That's all you can ask. And then you have Strasburg if you can win that game. They have to win the next game by rule. That is technically the rule of what will happen in a five-game series. That Russell Martin bomb might have been the dagger. Yo, what's Hunter Strickland's no. numbers look like? Off Hunter Strickland? That's like getting the last guy in the Yankees bullpen. You wouldn't care about that at all. It's Russell Martin, though, and it's just like we're, our bad's better than your bad, so in your face. Yikes, double, just... Losing both fan bases with one swing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's how you got to do it, Jake. You can't can't be biased here. So Hunter Strickland, in his, his postseason numbers, he's going to have like a 20 ERA. Yeah. Big bad. Yeah. <sighs> Was he ever teammates with Harper, or did they not collide at all? Harper and Hunter Strickland, they traded for him this year, right? He was a deadline grab. Yeah, so they weren't because they had that beef, like four years beef, right. which outed Hunter Strickland as one of the bigger losers in MLB. He thought carrying a four-year grudge, people would think it was, like, cool. Yeah. Are you Chip still mad about shoulder. Still mad about that? You're badass. All right, I just looked up Russell Martin's stats because you made me feel bad about saying he's bad, but he's a 6'6". Six, six, Seven OPS and a 79 OPS plus. So he's bad. He's a veteran catcher. That's why he's out there. He's not being asked to hit him. Bomb him hitting runs. a home run off Hunter Strickland didn't end this series. That's that's what you said. <laughs> oh, I think it's the dagger. <laughs> no, it's not even <laughs> close. Yeah, because 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 like you and I, that game wasn't officially won. It was like, hey, we may get a rally. Get some people on base in the ninth inning. You can do something. And then Russell Martin hits a two-run bomb, four-run lead, becomes a six-run lead, and you're thinking, okay, well, we officially just lost this fucking game, and we're probably going to lose another one. Dagger. Not even close. Full disagree. I love it. All the hope went out of everyone's eyes. 
That's that's a solo shot off of t- Tyler Lyons yesterday and the series being over. You're not taking in you, – you just ignored everything I said about how they had hope for the ninth inning, and then he took all that hope away. They didn't have hope. Oh, they did. Actually, I think Nationals fans have zero hope ever. They're, this game – this was bonus points for the Nationals. They told themselves – we have Scherzer and Strasburg lined up, fully rested. We can go get this. That's what they're thinking. What if it got Russell Martin's bat hot? He hits another home run tomorrow. Then, then you have to it. apologize to Russell Martin and say he's a quality hitter. Russell Martin's a hard Because that up. means he had a really good AL- NLDS. Russell Martin was the one guy that on the Yankees where I was like, this doesn't fit. Yeah. You don't. This isn't a good fit. He like fighting umpires and shit. I was like, what? get out of here, Russell Martin. Sounds like you and Russell Martin have some stuff you guys got to iron out. He's like an Adam Eaton type. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Zahardo. Let's move on to the next part of the show in which we preview the games coming up. <laughs> All right, Jake, we got four games set coming up again. Are you excited or are you daunted by this? Monday, four games? That's a lot. Because I want to watch all of them. man. I'm I'm juiced up. Uh, Get the AL back in it. Um, I'm I'm very interested in the NL series. I mean, to me, it seems like they're both going five. I could be very wrong about that. Um, especially after the Russell Martin dagger, I'm starting to change all my thoughts on that series, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited. It's a full day of baseball. It's going to be the last, it, it it's kind of like the NCAA tournament. Like you go into that first weekend of the NCAA tournament and the first day kicks off and you're like, this is insane. <laughs> you're, you're watching 15 seed Colgate play Duke. You're rooting your head off. Then kind of by by the middle of the day Friday, you're like, oh, uh, yo, I picked 11 seed St. John's to get the upset. Like, what time's that game on? And it's like, dude, they played yesterday. You missed it. And you're like, oh, there's too much basketball going on. Tomorrow's the last day where it's going to be like, okay, 15 hours of baseball might be a little too much. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still going to try to appreciate it, but it's going to be a lot. For us, the Yankees play last at 840. So, and that's when like I need to actually have some energy conserved in my body yeah. because, man, that takes a lot out of me. The first game is Astros-Rays, which is actually the, the best first game. It's a nice little intro platter. For it's the else. best news for the Rays, too. Yeah. Well, it's MLB smart. Because just don't put the trop on TV. They shouldn't. They right. should be radio only. This game. Whew. Tired John Boy sending a lot of daggers. They're starting to call you John Boy Martin. Uh, no, they they haven't. Noodle just said that. Noodle's not a they. Noodle's such a they, bro. No. Just got a haircut. He looks awful. Gross. Why does he look so awful? Why'd you get him a bad haircut? So, dog groomers are a mess, man. And, like, golden doodles are still new, so they don't fully know how to groom them. And so, like, if they get a little knotted, they have to shave them. So, we knew that. He started to get, like, a couple knots behind his ears. So, they had to shave them. But they left the whole tail bushy. Oh, that's so, terrible. So he's completely shaved with a foxtail. I'll send you a picture. I mean, you're going to laugh out loud. He looks pathetic. That's, um, that's a tough look for Noodle. But it's street. like, I just don't know what's going through the groomer's head. Like, how could you think, unless we asked for that, how could you think we want that? That's true. Like, that's you a- made an odd assumption that I wanted a completely shaved dog with the bushiest of bushy tails. Yeah. Maybe she doesn't do tails. Maybe the groomer's like, no tails here. 
I'm sending you the pick. It I oh. should be delivered shortly. Okay. Well, anyway, the Rays game is Charlie Morton versus Zach Greinke. Really good pitching matchup. Um, a lefty pitcher. So that means Yandy Diaz comes back into play. Greinke's lefty, right? Nope. Why Edit. do I think that? Why do I think that? Uh, I don't know, because he's fucking weird. Yeah, just because he's weird. I think he's a lefty. Zach Greinke is the best right-handed lefty in the league. IMO. That's true. See his press conference? He said, like, three words. Yeah, dude. That's that's where, like, and I, again, like, I know yeah, Zach your dog Greinke looks has had some mental your, stuff your dog and some looks anxiety ridiculous. stuff. When you do that, you're doing it to yourself. When when you go out of your ways to answer questions that acute and quick and, like, non-answers, you're now mentally going out of your way to do that, and, like, you're making it more of a thing. I think it's funny. I mean, I, I, mean, I think he's doing it, and he, he's, I think he's a little more self-aware than people give him credit for. I think it's funny. He he like crossed the line for me. Like it's it's Greg Popovich. Like Popovich, it used to be cool and cute, and now it's like, oh, dude, just like it's okay to answer just a question normally once. Yeah, Popovich has gotten rude. That's the problem. Right. Your dog looks ridiculous. My dog looks ridiculous. Like you almost can't give me that dog. How come you didn't say like, can you finish? Can I didn't pick him up. Does Jess like it? Like it's it's a yes and no thing. He's embarrassed. He should be. Damn. Who do you think? You think the Rays? I think the Rays are going to sneak out a win. I do too. Elimination game. The first elimination game for the Rays, coming off an off day, allows them to be all hands on deck. Right? Snell's out, and that's probably it. So we may see a ton of pitching changes. Anytime there's a jam, you got to bring in a specialist. Like the Rays but have But that one- might not be a great thing either. Like that, I could see that being problematic if Charlie Morton's having a good start into the fifth inning and then the first sign of trouble, they pull him for, you know, one of these guys in the Rays bullpen who's good, but they're not proven, and that could be it. So I, I think that's, that's a double-edged sword for the Rays. I'm just saying an all hands on deck Rays team is pretty good. I don't think they can do it two games yet alone three games in a row, but I think they may be able to sneak one out tomorrow. And I the other thing that I I would say and I think you're almost talking me down a little bit on the Rays. We thought they were going to do that in the wild card game. They kind of let Charlie Morton go. They believe in Charlie Morton. Yeah, the um, A's were doing absolutely nothing though. And and it's Charlie Morton's former teams. The trop is going to be a weird midday Monday playoff environment. I do think you should believe the Rays are the favorites in this game. If Charlie Morton looks like Charlie Morton, the Rays are at home and they have a little energy from that, slash the Rays are at home and the Houston doesn't have energy from that. I think the Rays are the favorite, but in an elimination game and potential sweep to a team as good as Houston... I think, and maybe we need to find a term for it, Jim, but the the uh-oh factor or the if one thing goes wrong for Tampa, it's done. They're on thin ice. If if someone boots a ball in the first inning, like, that's it. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. There's no coming back. So Tampa, if Tampa plays their game and it's clean – and Morton looks all right. I think they are the favorites in this game because playoff Granky doesn't do much for me. You have to be perfect. I I don't think they have to be perfect. They just have to be clean. Astros can win this easily as well. It's a coin flip for me, but the other games haven't been coin flips. So it's the closest odds. Rays need some, they need early energy and they can't have a slip on the ice moment to start the game. And I'm still rooting for a a crazy catwalk shot. And chaos from the trop. Stop the trop. Hashtag. The next one we got is the Braves versus the Cardinals, the three o'clock game. 
Dakota Hudson's getting the start for the Cardinals, unless they audible, and then we think it's going to be Keiko. Maybe they've said it on. Maybe I can find a report. Get the Google up. Dakota Hudson. Um, interesting. I mean, a young guy, twenty-five, a three-three-five ERA. Um, I'll say this, Jim, and this is going to worry you. Led the National League in walks, 86 walks in 174 innings. That's not good. And playoff baseball, that's not good. Snit was not ready to announce a Game 4 starter, but the fact that they aren't saying it's Tehran provides reason to believe they'll go with Keuchel. But based on the three Game 3 outcome, Tehran or Keuchel on short rest are the most likely for Game 4. When asked about the possibility of going with Tomlin, Snit said, there is a chance it could be a bullpen game. Do they have I mean, a I'm, bullpen? What's that even mean? Yeah, you, you don't have a bullpen. How do you bullpen day without a bullpen? For me, I mean, maybe you throw someone out there for one inning, but it's got to be Keuchel because you're not going to use Keuchel in game five. So you're going to go down not using him? And, I mean, this is a classic case. I mean, Keuchel's a veteran. He's a sinker baller. You hear all the old rumors like, actually, sinker ballers, when they're a little tired, they pitch better, man. Um, <laughs> it's actually really good baseball talk. I think I think next time I'm at a random bar watching a game, <laughs> there's a guy with, like, a, a, a nice moving two-seamer. I'm just going to bump him and be like, oh, he's getting better action later in the game because his arm's tired. <laughs> They'll just look over and be like, stop talking to me, please. Please um, shut up. You have to use Keiko tomorrow, right? Yeah, well, according to Trey XIV, he says start Max Freed. I mean, you're using him. I'm okay with them opening with Max Freed, I guess. He's pitched in every game. <laughs> him and Melanson. Him and Melanson. Pitched in every game. That's awesome. You rooting for the Braves? Or are you rooting for Game 5? I'm Obviously, I'm rooting for Game 5. I think I'm rooting for Game 5. I I will say this. I As you saw on this show, I became a supporter of the Baby Braves. Um, so I, I think there's a just a little bottom part of my heart that's rooting for them. But no, I mean, I'm rooting for baseball. I think that Game 5, I mean, Game 5 Flaherty uh, would be awesome to see. Uh, so I, I am rooting for that. Do you think Dakota Hudson's faced the Braves this year? He has once back in May, six innings pitched, 6.1 innings pitched, two earned runs. I got to say, Jim, I'm in, in Cardinal fans at talking Jake, reach out and correct me. But I've got to say, if I'm a Cardinals fan, I think I'm worried about Dakota Hudson. Um, Well, his leash is going to be incredibly short. But again, like out of that St. Louis pin, can they piece together? If if he does have a short leash, are they going to be able to piece together six innings, seven innings? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> that's that's the question. <laughs> They'll try. They will try their hardest and do their best. Um, and maybe I'm not giving Hudson enough love. Uh, and since mid-August, Dakota Hudson has actually been. Pretty good. Um, last nine starts, 53.1 innings to a 1.86 ERA. So I am being a little bit of an asshole. Um, the walks are still concerning. I mean, even in that time period, two games with five walks and, and another game with four walks, and as we've seen with playoff baseball, like, that's a rally. Dude, the walk is a rally quote. I love it. All right, next game. Dodgers, Nats. You Dodgers. got this series over. Yeah, this game. Yeah, Dodgers are just gonna win this one. You know Max Scherzer's pitching, right? Yeah. So can't emphasize that enough. Um, you know Walker Bueller's pitching. He's not Walker Bueller. He's not pitching. Rich Hill's pitching. So <laughs> Dick Mountain. Um, yeah, dude, Max Scherzer. They blew it. This should have been Scherzer should have come out in the pen. You made a plan, yeah. Last episode, I made a plan that was too you like too much. Yeah, and now they didn't do your plan, and I'm mad at them. It's fair. 
I mean, Scherzer was in a uh, was in a elimination game, and he didn't really have a good outing already this week. Yeah. So it's redemption time for Scherzer. Let's see what his stats are versus the Dodgers. If I pull them up and they're bad, what are you going to say? Are you going this season or lifetime, or what are you looking for? I'll, I'll do this season first. Okay. You think he made a start against them? Maybe. They played, what, six games? Seven games. One start, seven innings pitched, two earned runs, seven strikeouts. I don't know. I, I just think you're you're getting too zoomed out away from, like, Scherzer's their guy. I mean, elimination game at home, that Max Scherzer's who you want on the bump. I want to root for Scherzer because he's a psychopath and I love him. And I don't really like Rich Hill that much because he's a psychopath and he kind of weirds me out. Right. He's he's a weirdo. He's not a psychopath. Yeah. I agree. Scherzer's straight psychotic. I'm Dude, that know. gift that came out the other day, and I, I know there's a lot of them now, but that one in the wild card game where he's he's just he's winding up and he's like, you're fucking mine. You're fucking mine. Like, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, dude. <laughs> fucking mine, motherfucker. You're fucking mine. Dude, I wouldn't want to pitch against that. Like, if I'm being honest, be like, yo, yeah. can we call in not a psychopath? We're just playing baseball here, bud. <laughs> and I think oh. it's pretty funny because we uh, we critique two way McKay on the Rays because he's a hardo. But like, if you're as much as a hardo as Scherzer, and no, he's you're that two, good. Two way McKay's a sad sack. He's not a hardo. He's like he's like every, frumpy. I mean, there's definitely anger there. Yeah, but it's like anger because things aren't going his way. Scherzer is intense. McKay's not intent. I don't know what it is. There's a he's there's Max a difference. I don't, I don't know how I don't know how to use words to explain the difference. But Scherzer's so awesome. All right. How many how many Dodgers have hit home runs? Uh oh, Justin Turner is three for six versus Scherzer with two home runs. Jock Peterson has a home run off of him. Corey Seeger has a home run off of him. AJ Pollock has a home run off of him. Max Muncie has a home run off of him. I think it was Pierzynski. Um calling one of the playoffs games because they were talking about Bregman and they said that um, the two guys that stand the closest to the plate are Bregman and Turner. And they said that Turner, he has the open stance. He's baiting you to throw in there because he wants you to try to come in and turn on it. They were like, Bregman's just a sick pup. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Bregman can just somehow hit that ball and we don't really get it. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I I'm not gonna bet against Scherzer. Um, if they somehow, if Scherzer can only go like six innings, it's over. But I think Max is gonna be out there until the eighth. Right. I was, I had something I was gonna say, but I I forgot now. That's all right. Rich Hill doesn't give me much faith. Didn't no. he? Wasn't he injured? He came back and he pitched one inning and then he got injured again like how much has he pitched this season of late more like rich chill um what he's been doing rich he Hill's made been he made since 2005 dude so he made rich hill made a start he got pulled in the first because he was injured then he pitched two innings they were good then three innings so i mean he's not stretched out at all he, he's thrown 50 pitches in his last outing and I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, what, the Dodgers are going to try to do a bullpen day? Their bullpen day sucks. You're going Rich Hill and bullpen day over Scherzer back against the wall at home? This is going five. It's going to be Walker Bueller versus Strasburg in L.A., and it's going to be awesome. When the Dod- If the Dodgers win tomorrow, can everyone uh, clip that audio of Jake and then tweet it at, um, at your dum-dum? It's this new Twitter account. I'm making to rival freezing cold takes. It's at you're a dum dum. Freezing cold Jakes. Freezing cold Jakes. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Freezing cold Jakes. I like that. Thank you. Not really. Not really. Thank you. Ryan Zimmerman, two homers off of Rich Hill. So watch. Oh, out. and you got to start him anyways. Because how about fucking Howie Kendrick? What are you doing? It's the base running thing this time. So bad. 
He's made a lot of errors. One of the worst, like, I'm, and again, I guess I don't have my worst base running documented in front of me, but. I mean, bring up Jorge Posada's life. Right. Now, Jorge Posada's highlight reel, but this is playoff. Like, Jorge Posada knew he was a bad base runner, that in a playoff game, he's going to just say, like, nope, I can't tag up. I don't know how to run. Howie Kendrick gets on the base and is like, all right, going to have to tag up. I'm bluffing. Oh, no, nah, I'll go. He was the most dead meat I've seen in a while. The most? Yeah. I missed it, so I don't even know what happened. Can you tell me? For oh, else that bad, have missed man. It? So it was, it was the bases loaded, um, no outs in the sixth. Nats bring in Arias out of the bullpen. Fly ball to right. It's going to sack fly, score a run. They throw home with it. Kendrick was on second, and he starts running to third. If he goes to third straight up, he was just going to get in easy. But he stops. He starts going back to second, and then he runs to third again. And he was just in the middle of the base pass, and they were looking at him like, what are you doing? So it went bases loaded, no outs, to runner on first. They got to run two outs. That sounds bad. Yeah. So you with those stats against Rich Hill, you have to go Zimmerman. <laughs> Have to. And then the last game of the day, Yankees, Twins. It's uh, Jake Odorizzi versus Luis Severino. Um, Luis Severino is kind of the best arm talent on the Yanks. He's uh, looked good since coming back, but still still hesitant. Like Tanaka, I was like, hey, Tanaka's going to be good. Severino, very interested. First inning, if he's throwing gas and filth, I'll be pumped up. Oda Rizzi, did you hear these quotes, Jake? So No, give me some quotes. Rocco Baldelli. Oh, the weird quotes? Rocco Baldelli said you're, the Yankees are going to see a, a different Jake Oda Rizzi. Yeah, I thought I thought you meant Jake Oda Rizzi talking, but yeah, that was one of the weirdest quotes I've I've heard. I think he's going to throw a lot of off-speed pitches, not a lot of fastballs or a lot of like what what? What does he mean? Throwing lefty? I don't know. I think we're going to see the same Odorizzi, and you're just trying to bluff us. Because if, if, if Odorizzi was going to come out with a new style or or something, then why would you let it, let the Yanks know? Or does he just mean, like, mentally, oh, they're going to see a new guy than they saw last time? I don't know what that quote means. I guess I, I had to hear how he said it. It it was an odd quote. You're going to see a different guy. Well, A, we haven't seen him in the playoffs yet. Yeah, and I don't know. I think if you're Rocco Baldelli, um, the Twins are clearly outmatched at this point. You're, <laughs> we, we joked about this a little bit, but we were saying, what do you say on the flight? Um, I, I don't know. I think he's just looking for anything, man, um, anything. And uh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> He he's got to he's got to attack the zone with fastballs. I mean, it's kind of has to. You just have to throw strikes. If it's a curveball, changeup, slider, fastball, you just have to throw strikes because you can't you can't walk eight guys and expect to beat the Yankees. No, I think the Yankees will win this game. Do you think but, Severino's a question mark at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because he's still on his fourth outing. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not full confidence. If I see like a couple pitches, then I'll be full confidence. Do you think this game's gonna be tight or a shit show? Shit show. Okay. Both ways? No. Okay. I think the Yanks win big. I'm so biased though. So Right. But I said that I I've every I've everything I've said about this series I've said with the same bias and it's all come true. So. Yeah, if you're the twins, it's I guess it's kind of what I said about the Rays. You're just you're you're playing your game, waiting. You're living in fear of that oh no moment that if you give the Yankees an extra out or or, or you boot a ball and the Yankees get an extra at bat, you're just living in fear of that because that could be the end of your season. Here are the Yankees that have a home run off Odorizzi. Edwin, Brett Gardner, Gary Sanchez, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, Glaber Torres, 
JD has a double and a triple. Six guys. Out of the nine. Used to be in the division for a while, to be fair. Uh, I don't think that comes into play. The only person with a lot of at-bats against him is Gardner and uh, Encarnacion. All the rest are not a lot. Just saying there's a lot of history of the Yankees beating Odorizzi. So maybe that's why Baldelli's trying to let everyone know he's going to be a new guy. <laughs> he's, he's not going to be the, the Odorizzi that gave up 10 hits and 6 earned runs earlier this year, all right? There's 9 earned runs. It's bad. Yapes. And the Yankees are running out the same lineup again, so that's the only insight we know. Boone was like, yeah, we'll run it back because, of course, why would we change it? We've scored 18 runs. <laughs> We've scored 18 runs. So that's the nightcap. Uh, I think that the middle games will be the best games and the National League games will be the best games. Uh, you think you think the Houston Tampa game is going to be good? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just going to be not fun to watch. Gotcha. That game could be a game could go extras and it'd be a drag. So if it's a great baseball game and the Trop doesn't get involved at all, you're still not going to be able to shake the Trop? Huh. You got to look at the Trop. It's ugly. Man. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's what I was asking. It's like aesthetically displeasing. Yeah. There's no dirt in the infield. They make fake crowd noise. It's turf. And it's just unfun. I've never enjoyed watching a game there, no matter what happens. Yeah. I feel like there's going to be a funny moment. 20 years from now where some kids like they're looking at highlights from the old Astrodome and they'll be like, Whoa, they played baseball on that. And then it'll be like, you know, 1985. And then they'll look at highlights from the Rays from 2019. And they'll be like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Everyone else has retractable roofs and gorgeous fields. And you guys are playing on a rubber ball. <laughs> Someone got so mad at me, they were like, if they didn't have a roof, no one would go. So just shut the fuck up. I was like, oh, because they're the only stadium with a roof. Dummies. Yeah. No, <laughs> I'm with the roof stands. <laughs> yeah. I got a mean DM today. You know me. I, I'm not a burn bridges guy, but you know what? If you're a Tampa fan that defends not going to the games because Tampa has a roof, I'm going to come at you. I'm going to knock you out. Wait, if they say I don't go to the games because they have a roof? Yes. Oh, They don't go because of traffic because it's in a terrible location. And it's a terrible Pete, place. baby. Who the hell would go out of their way to go there? Dude, I got a real mean tweet. Mean tweet to wrap it up. I like this. Yeah. I said, is starting Randy Dobnak the worst managerial decision? And that was it's a fair question. I think it's the right. worst managerial decision this postseason. And uh, this kid DM'd me, and he said, please attempt to hit him, you fat Jewish fuck. Wow. And I said, I'm not Jewish, nor could I hit Randy Dobnak because I suck at baseball. So what's your point? I mean, you could. If you got to bunt and get the guy over. I could bunt off Dobnak. Yeah, I was going to say. I I could bunt. I could bunt. If you got to do bunt. your job, I am so excited when we do bunting off of pro players because I think you're going to have a rude awakening. All I want to do, I don't want to bunt off pro players. I want to catch. I want to strap on the gear and catch some pitchers. So are you coming off that you can bunt a professional pitcher? Was this a conversation we had? Oh, yes, many times. You've said you you with confidence think you could bunt a professional pitcher. I think if I'm remembering the conversation, it was it had to be fastballs. I mean, I don't, but I'll I'll even allow that because I still think you're in crazy trouble because they're 94 and they move, dude. <laughs> last yeah. last fastball you tried to bunt was 70 and straight as an arrow, and it was the easiest thing I ever did. Yes, agree. Okay, set it up. Let's go to. All right. uh, we'll set it up. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go to somewhere in November where we can do that. I might meet up with Melville again soon. Maybe he'll throw some apples at me. 
Can you let him know that I think uh, I'm going to chant his barbecue name at him? I didn't, but I can. Okay, cool. All right, that ends the show. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Four games tomorrow. We will be back to recap them all and preview whatever Huge is next. Tomorrow. How many? It's possible that all four series can end tomorrow. Houston wins, Braves win, Dodgers win, Yankees win, DS is over. Possible all four series could not end tomorrow. Another possibility. Two possibilities. Probably no, going to be somewhere in the middle. Some can end. How many do you think end out of the four? I say... Ooh, this is fun. I say... I say three. I'm going two, and I think it's both AL games, but I'm going to assume I get one wrong. <laughs> so, so what's your guess? So it's two, but I'm going to guess one of the NL games goes, but right now I'm saying both AL. Okay. I have uh, Dodgers and Yankees ending the other two... Not, but also you just said five series. So the Braves and Cardinals is not going to end the other three. Will okay, but I want the Rays to win that Dodgers Rich Hill bullpen day. You're going to die on that mountain. Uh, I hope you're right. Now I'm rooting for you. That game's over. (laughs) (laughs) That's. My God. People may not watch. Scherzer in elimination game? Might as well have my grandmother. Have her do what? Bunt. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> Grandma Bunts, five star review. She couldn't bunt, dude. She could. No, no, no. Maybe she like a make a nice bunt cake. It'd be a first baseline bunt. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>